Trailers for video games are meant to hype you up and make you go nuts wanting the game, counting the days, and getting excited. But sometimes, well, mistakes were made. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 times gamers noticed a mistake in the trailer. Starting off with number 10, it's Connect Star Wars. The second this game got announced, it became the internet's big punching bag. The whole thing just looked goofy as hell, and the trailer did not do it any favors, especially this one, which is meant to appeal to kids, I guess, but it's, it's painful to watch. Do we really need a game with dancing stormtroopers? The obvious joke would be to just say that the game itself was a mistake, but here's the thing, the actual trailer is pretty accurate to what you're, you're actually getting. Obviously, they show the Kinect sensor working way better than it ever did, but that's pretty standard motion control game trailers, and they're always kind of misleading. We're not just talking about bad trailers here, we're talking about mistakes. If you look closely during this cringeworthy dance sequence, there's a pretty big one. Uh, they actually took the time to accurately replicate the kid's motion on the Kinect sensor in the upper left, but if you look closely, it's pretty obvious that the motions the kid doing don't match up with the moves that are apparently being done in the game. When it just shows the game screen in the trailer, you keep your eyes on top left it's it's not even close the entire trailer is already a bountiful source of unintentional comedy but uh you know what the chris pratt as obi-wan kenobi trailer i think they actually did a better job marketing the game because yeah honestly it probably more accurately represents what you're doing during the game than actually trying to replicate the game because i mean a lot of it is just sort of going haha i'm a jedi and number nine is Watch Dogs. The 2013 Watch Dogs trailer remains infamous for obvious reasons. Uh, one of the most misleading trailers that's ever existed, uh, just from a graphical standpoint. Unlike most bullshot trailers, this one's got all the UI elements. For all anyone knew, this was the game, and Ubisoft did nothing to make anyone think otherwise. Listen, I know all the downgrading and all that stuff that's been associated with some pretty nasty parts of gaming culture, but there's a good reason why these trailers come out the way they do. Most games are in a pretty sorry state, even when they're just months away from being finished, so the Watch Dogs devs just swung big with what they assumed they could accomplish with the graphics, and uh, it didn't work out. Is is it honest? Nah, I would say it's a little dishonest, but same time, I think they thought it was going to look a lot closer to that. In this specific case, though, they were really pushing it. Some of the visuals look more like a PS5 game rather than a PS4 launch game. There was basically no way it was ever going to look this good, and everybody knew. They called it out, like, immediately. When the game eventually came out, it was, of course, lambasted for not looking nearly as good as the 2013 trailer made it appear. There was no smoking gun that definitively proved the game had been intentionally downgraded, at least until this little mistake was discovered. A Guru 3D forums poster who opened up the game files actually actually managed to find a whole host of graphical options that mimic the one seen in the E3 demo. It can only be accessed on PC, I mean, obviously, and they're not well optimized, but all the fancy lighting, fog, and depth of field effects from the trailer, they're here. None of it works, really. And after it was discovered, Ubisoft eventually patched it out, but it was proof that the E3 demo was at least absolutely not recorded on a PS4, rather on a development PC. At number 8 is Batman Arkham City. The first teaser trailer for Batman Arkham City was pretty badass, that I cannot deny, but it's got a few curious mistakes hidden in there. Not a long one by any stretch, uh, and most of the focus is on this random guy getting interrogated by Doctor Strange, but some of the stuff with Batman shows off stuff that isn't actually possible in the game, like this part where he's using a quick fire gadget while gliding. Uh, that's an ability you can pull off in Arkham Knight, but not here. Uh, could it have been taken out in the last minute? Yeah, it maybe was intended to be in the game, I, I don't know, but either way, uh, it's not, and it's in the trailer. This one's blink and you'll miss it, but when he shoots a guy with one of his tools, it's actually the Ultra Bat Claw, one of the few tools Batman only gets in Arkham Asylum. In every other game, he uses the regular old Bat Claw, except for Blackgate, which for some reason has a regular Bat Claw, and it uses the Ultra Bat Claw design. It's one case where they are probably originally planning on having the Claw be the upgraded version, and then change their minds after the trailer, or maybe everyone's just confused about what the Bat Claw even is supposed to look like. And number seven is Dark Souls 2. Looking at them now, the trailers for Dark Souls 2, pretty, pretty weird. It's like Bondi Namco knew that they had a big hit on their hands, but 
didn't really know how to market it. So instead of gameplay, we mostly got a bunch of CGI movies about stuff that only vaguely resembled the final game. Not that the gameplay trailers were super accurate to the final product either. The 2013 game show one is a big one. Uh, in it, it shows the game with some pretty impressive lighting effects for the time. Apparently, the light mechanic was somehow going to play into the gameplay as well, which sort of carried over into the main game. Torches aren't infinite in this game, and you can only light them at specific spots. So there's some danger of them going out, but the actual lighting effects are way less prominent in the actual game than the trailer. The difference is pretty massive, and it made the final game look way worse, too. That wasn't even the only weird mistake in one of these trailers. There was also a CGI one where the player fights a bunch of guys in white masks that are not in the game. Could they have gotten taken out in development? Yeah, in fact, that's apparently what happened. But it begs the question, why make such a big deal about them in the trailer? And number six is Crackdown 3. <laughs> That was, that was one of those games just kind of came and went, didn't it? Back when it was shown at uh, E3 2014, seemed like a really big deal, but even at the time, people couldn't help but wonder if what we were seeing uh, was, uh, I don't know, necessarily possible, let's say. The big moment in the trailer, which is all CGI, but clearly meant to give us an idea of how the game works, is when an entire skyscraper collapses. This was this insane reveal that strongly implied, yes, we'd be able to blow up entire buildings in Crackdown 3. Fast forward five years and another console generation to 2019 when the game actually came out and no destruction nothing at least in single player if you actually wanted to do the stuff shown in the trailer you had to do uh this fairly mediocre multiplayer mode called wrecking zone why why is it like this well because the entire real-time destruction engine was meant to be powered by cloud-based computing they made it sound like this cloud technology would make the console 25 times more powerful than without which if you've had any experience with cloud gaming oh do i need to finish this sentence i'm not sure but uh, basically BS, right? It, it does not work that way. And big surprise, the developers struggled to keep this promised feature in the game before eventually just cutting it. Crackdown 3's trailer was just way too ambitious for its own good. The explosion was just the worst of its many exaggerations. Like the whole trailer is nothing like the final game. At number five is Cyberpunk 2077, another game where expectations clashed extremely hard with reality. Some of that's up to fans getting too caught up in the hype cycle, but uh, CD Projekt Red is not innocent in this situation. I'm not going to rag on the first CGI trailers for not being representative of the game because it's basically meant to introduce players to this new setting, but later trailers are meant to show off the gameplay, and to put it mildly, it's somewhat misleading about what you're actually doing. The most egregious thing is that they cut together stuff from the actual game, but some of the clips are just blatantly fabricated their in-game cutscenes made specifically for the trailer everything they showed and implied made it seem like we were getting something like a cyberpunk gta 3 but the actual game's more of a linear story driven game with a mostly static world on its own terms i think the public perception has come to accept the game for what it is but uh, it took a while to get there was this an accident that they left in no but that doesn't make it not a mistake at number four, Final Fantasy VIII, uh, there's an obvious error in the trailers. Mostly these have been about misleading trailers, but let's talk about some that just plain screw it up. If you think video game advertising is bad now, uh, nothing would prepare you for the misleading nonsense of a 90s video game trailer. Back then, advertising firms barely even knew what a video game was, let alone how to market them, so you got some really amazingly goofy stuff, like this Final Fantasy VIII trailer narrated by the trailer guy himself, Don LaFontaine. This may be one of the most stereotypical 90s video game commercials I've ever seen. Goofy voiceover? Check. Absolutely no in-game footage shown? Check. Blatant misunderstanding of what the game even is? Oh, you better believe that gets checked. The most laughable line out of the whole thing has got to be this part where it says, And your thumbs will be really, really sore. While showing the character of Quistus firing a machine gun, which is obviously from a CGI cutscene. I mean, this is a JRPG. It is not a uh, first-person shooter or an action game. There's almost no button mashing in it. Uh, your thumb will not get sore playing it. In fact, your thumb will probably thank you for playing this compared to any other game that might actually give you some form of carpal tunnel. It's such a cheesy hello fellow kids type line that anybody who knows anything about games would know is totally irrelevant to the game itself. And this is back when these games were fully turn-based. Yes, I understand they've incorporated action elements, but they're still not button mashers, right? I know it's just a dumb trailer, but it really stands out how totally wrong it is and possibly misleading, even if accidental. 
And number three is Anthem, which uh, the major mistake of the Anthem trailer was being a trailer for Anthem. Uh, few video games have been memory hold as fast as Anthem has. It was supposed to be Bioware's big swing into the games as a service genre and a Destiny 2 killer, but instead, it was Anthem. The game has probably been Bioware's most public failure, even if it had some redeeming features. Like, it's not the worst game ever by a long shot, but the pretense that it lived up to even kind of the potential shown in the 2017 gameplay reveal trailer. Ooh. Now, what's interesting about it is that most of the stuff actually is in the game, but the experience is just nothing like it. There's a shot of a herd of wild animals running by. That's not in the game. There's a part where some monsters are fighting each other. That's not in the game. There's a part where a guy discovers dead light caverns, implying there are secret locations to find. That's not in the game. Near the end of the trailer, there's a part where a robot gets attacked and fall over. Uh, that is in the game, but it's partitioned off in its own mission instance. It's not something that can dynamically happen. Uh, the multiplayer stuff is the most egregious, though. They show the player teaming up with other people on the fly mid-mission seems like a simple thing tons of games can do it for real but anthem can't the rest of the trailers problems fall in the standard stuff you'd expect from these types of gameplay trailers but even for a vertical slice type trailer like this one we were shown something just ridiculously different from what the final game is and frankly i, I think it's a case of massive hubris which is very often a mistake <laughs> At number two, the No Man's Sky trailer, which is, of course, a mistake in of itself. So much has been made about No Man's Sky and its trailers that it feels like there's not a lot left to be said. But if you're going to talk about bad or misleading trailers, they got to be pretty near the top of the list. The E3 2014 trailer was pretty amazing at the time, and even more amazing was how little like the final game it was. The basics were all there, sure, but so much it was toned down or cut from the final product of the game that the developers were accused of false advertising. And again, we're talking about an instance of hubris, more so than intentionally just lying. But the ultimate effect was that they were essentially lying. Now, I don't know a lot came of the allegations of false advertising. There was an investigation, and for what I've read, they got off the hook, but it just goes to show that a lot of people ended up feeling pretty hoodwinked by the game when it was released. Now, in 2023, the game is in a way better state, and uh, Hello Games managed to get over the disappointing launch by being very consistent and very generous with significant updates to the game that cost nothing. Uh, their post-launch support was just fantastic, but the game's lead developer, Sean Murray, managed to put his foot in his mouth more than a few times. I get being enthusiastic about the game, but some of the stuff he said before the game came out was super questionable, especially when it came to multiplayer. And I have a feeling everybody at the studio was just reeling back every single time he spoke publicly. The thing is, he rarely said anything directly wrong, but he implied a lot of things would be there that just weren't. And finally, at number one, Aliens Colonial Marines. Not as many trailers as blatantly misleading as the ones in a Aliens Colonial Marines. This game was in development hell for years, so likely a lot of the game got changed between the trailers, but the problem is that a lot of the stuff used in those early trailers would still show up in the later trailers. One gameplay, and I use the word loosely here, gameplay trailer, shows this sequence that was not in the final game at all, with multiple gameplay elements that also aren't in the final game. The whole part where you get chased by a crusher alien then end up in a hangar with power loaders equipped with flamethrowers is it, it you can see it in the trailer but you can't see it in the game none of it ever happens there's another trailer where you guys in this docking bridge between ships that get damaged and your character gets a choice of what direction to dodge implying the section is interactive but it's just a cutscene in the final game the weird thing is all this pre-release stuff is not that impressive like the gameplay looks pretty weak like a subpar call of duty campaign uh but it was actually a lot better than it was in the final product which is eesh. it was so bad that the asa the same people who investigated hello games and found no wrongdoing in the no man's sky trailers actually did reprimand sega for colonial marines misleading trailers they looked at the trailer for no man's sky and said uh, all right you know it's feasible that you intended to have this stuff in the game. Not so for Sega in this case. All the bad press for Sega to add a disclaimer to certain trailers that said, work in progress, which isn't much, but it's better than nothing. We've talked about a lot of deceptive trailers here and in the past, but this is 
one of the only ones that I know that got a lot of pushback and the company behind it actually admitted some wrongdoing. I'd call it a standout mistake though. How about you? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is of course a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.